Hello, I'm John Diamond and I'm a volunteer with the Enable Community Foundation. I want to take a moment today to show you how I would go about assessing the quality of the build of an Enable Phoenix hand. Um, I've been involved in several build events where we've had multiple people building hands and at the end uh, the hands quite often need a bit of adjustment, they aren't all perfect. So this is the sort of procedure you can go through to assess the quality and just tweak uh, the things that need improving. First of all, with a hand, um, one of the most obvious, but it is important to say things to assess, is that none of the parts are obviously broken. Um, particularly pay attention to these pins. These are called snap pins and the a split end of the pin can sometimes get broken during assembly. Just double check that none of them have actually got themselves broken. Um, another uh, aspect uh, to take account of is that um, none of the parts are obviously fragile. Um, sometimes printed parts um, can be somewhat weak in their structure and also the surface of them uh, can have holes in and are porous. This is a good solid print. If I were to push my thumb here there's absolutely no flexing but um, if you can push your finger into the part or if it you know, feels when you uh, put a bit of force on it the thing's about to crack then that's probably not going to be good enough. Uh, where possible avoid any sharp edges um, and um, take a look at the way the fingers and thumb are assembled. With the Phoenix, you've got two main parts to each uh, digit. You've got the uh, thumb or fingertip, and then uh, this part is referred to as the uh, proximal phalanges, uh, also sometimes referred to as a phalanx. Um, with uh, the thumb, you'll find that the thumb tip is wider than any of the fingers, so it's a different design to the fingers and the thumb proximal is also wider, fatter, than the fingers, uh, the, the proximals used on the fingers. I have seen occasions where the thumb uh, proximal has been intermixed with the fingers, and so you have a fat uh, proximal on the finger and a thin one on the thumb. That's not acceptable. You've got to have the right component on the right digit. Also, you've also got to watch that the thumb tip hasn't accidentally been used on a finger and vice versa. Talking about fingers, these fingers actually have two different lengths of fingertip. The pinky finger and the index finger use a short fingertip, and the ring finger and the middle finger use a long fingertip. Make sure the right fingertips have been put on the right fingers. Let's take a look underneath. The gauntlet and the palm both have this surgical grade foam attached to it. Make sure that the foam has been trimmed neatly on all surfaces, all edges, and that um, there's no ragged aspect to that. That should all be nice and neatly trimmed at the ends. Um, now, let's take a look at the resting uh, angle of the gauntlet. This gauntlet, um, when it's resting, no force applied, should be at least 30 degrees from the horizontal. If it is like that when the fingers are um, uh, straight, so if it's like that, that's not good enough. It's got to be at least 30 degrees. It doesn't matter if it's a bit more, maybe even up as far as 45, but no shallower than 30 degrees. If it is shallower than 30 degrees, then there's a good chance that uh, hand is going to have to be restrung before it can be used. In other words, all strings taken out and new ones put in, and so that's not adequate. Um, the thing with the stringing that you should also check is that the strings are using the right holes. Underneath here, you'll notice that uh, the tendon strings come out from little holes uh, behind each of the fingers and the thumb. It's very easy when you're stringing a hand to accidentally have the uh, strings come out from the gap between the palm and the finger, or the gap between, uh, or in fact it's only in the fingers that this really matters, uh, between the palm and the finger joint here. It mustn't do that. It must come out from that little D-shaped hole behind uh, the knuckle joint. Okay, 
Let's take a look at the gripper box. This box here contains a component called the whiffle tree. That's the component here that, if I were to pull here, can rock backwards and forwards. You want to see that that is able to rock backwards and forwards, that it's not jammed, but with the hand at rest, the front of the whipple tree should be in alignment with the front of the gripper box. It should also be adjusted right to the very front of its adjustment. That adjustment is made with these two screws on the back and it should not be pulled into the gripper box. It should be as far forward as you can manage. Um, the thumb tensioner pin ideally should be also in alignment with the front of the gripper box. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit forward or a little bit back of the front, but not too far because then you're losing the amount of adjustability. You want to make sure that the six knots, that's a knot on each fingertip and thumb tip, and the knot on the thumb tensioner pin are neat, tied strongly, and have been sealed with glue, preferably uh, cyanoacrylate or CA glue such as super glue. The fingers and thumbs have these uh, grippy uh, fingertips. These are referred to as Lee Tippy uh, gel fingertips and they, these should be uh, on the hand and they should be uh, neatly attached. Okay let's take a look at the way the hand works. When the wrist is flexed the finger, fingers and thumb form a grip. That should be as friction free as possible and when it is closed uh, it should form a neat grip uh, here uh, with the fingers and thumb. Let's take a look at the gauntlet. The gauntlet is thermoformed from a flat printed part. Um, the thermoforming should uh, be nice and even, symmetrical left and right, and also it must not show any signs of stress. I have seen a gauntlet that obviously wasn't hot enough when it was formed, and it induced a stress crack down this uh, line here, either side of the dovetail joint. Um, when this type of plastic is forcibly bent, you'll tend to find that it will go white at the point of the bend. And if you see a white line here, it means that it's been broken as opposed to properly thermoformed. And one final thing, let's take a look at the Velcro straps. These straps are attached on the thumb side of the gauntlet. So here's the attachment, and that's on the same side of the gauntlet as the thumb. If they were attached on the other side, the hand would be more difficult for the recipient to put on and off uh, themselves. So uh, make sure that they are attached on the thumb side. And with that, you should have a quality hand that is ready for use by a real-world recipient.